Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Volcano Block. I just discovered this magical item right here and we're going to put it to good use. So this magical block that I discovered is a linear extractor. There are a couple other types. There is a funneling extractor which pulls items from inventories on all sides and pushes them forward and you can turn it off with redstone. And there's a dispersing extractor which pu pulls items from inventories in front and pushes them to all other sides in round robin. So basically, with these, we can kind of automate machines. So I have this heat sawmill producing us planks and sawdust, and it's all being extracted into here, which is lovely. And we can even use nether chests. We can make a couple more of those uh, and utilize them to store multiple items here uh, because we're probably not going to process uh, different types of items in here, but we could link up this somehow but it would be very very strange to do it with like a funneler there and then an arrow heater underground and then a furnace there and then a thingy there and it would be just weird i think uh, if we wanted to automatically process stone but we can just toss a couple of stacks of cobblestone and process it into stone because we don't need that much so i want to utilize this new area that i made and i want to set up these machines a bit better so what we're going to do is we're going to remove all this lava that is right underneath here i'm going to grab my buckets that i have somewhere uh, one is on me, and I had more, I think. I have charred buckets. I actually don't get set on fire anymore, so that's going to be pretty cool. So what we're going to do is just uh, do that and that, and we can just pick up these. I mean, I get set on fire. I just don't get uh, any sort of weird stuff. Uh, this is going to stop processing for the moment, but that's fine. So let's just toss these away, uh, and let's go swim a little bit just so we get put ourselves out, basically. And I want to grab all of these magmatic arrow heaters and not drop them into lava. And then we're going to go here to the middle. Set this up. Let's say we want the furnace in the middle because that's kind of a thing we use a lot of. So we're going to put this here. We're going to put you some cobblestone. And we're going to put an extractor here on the side. And I actually want to try to make the other extractor as well. So this dispersing extractor, we need a linear one. And then we need a ceramic gear it has to be a ceramic gear oh that's kind of annoying because uh, i don't have much ceramic but i want to try it at least so we're, we're going to make more ceramic at some point anyway so this is going to make the funneling one and this is going to be the dispersing one so if we put this one here uh let's say like that let's break this and this i hope everything's not going to go uh, and light itself on fire we can probably put stone bricks around uh, to prevent that, but I'll do that in a moment. Uh, so, lava, 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 lava. One of you. Bam. Let's do take a swim. And then put a stone brick here. And we're going to put like, stone bricks in a distally type area place. Like so. I don't want to vein mine because it's going to get rid of a lot of the wood. But it's fine. We're just going to do that and then bring the stone bricks around. There we go. Okay, so that is doing its thing. And if we give you a dispersing extractor, you're probably going to extract and you can probably put down into this chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we can probably put a chest here. And if we make another one of those dispersing ones, we can make this a bit more compact, I think. So if we take that's funneling, that's the dispersing one. If we take a chest and we put this guy here. That's going to extract up and then push into this inventory because it's the only inventory it can push to. So let's grab a stack of cobblestone and we put it in here. Yep, that puts it in there, leaves the rest in here and works. So that is kind of how we can automate it. Uh, if we wanted to just use the funneling extractors, which are the ones here, we don't actually get to see the machine and it's going to be weird. And I want to space the machines enough so that we don't have a problem with with these extractors going into different spots. So basically we would have chest, machine, chest, basically. So like that, and then here we would have chest, machine, chest. Uh, and then we need more of these funneling extractors. So we need more uh, ceramic. And ceramic was, if I recall correctly, an explosion furnace with clay, iron, and I believe you need to put in gunpowder as well. There's also ceramic dust, which is, yeah, just, okay. Yeah, we need gunpowder. Uh, and I need to remember how that how that was made. It's dead cord, I think. Uh, no, it's red flint crushed. That's fine. We have a bunch of red flint. I made a bit in between episodes. So let's grab a couple stacks here. 
Uh, where can we toss it so that I can crush it? Probably in front of our chests will work. So like that and like that. That's quite a bit of gunpowder, lovely. And then we need iron. So I'm gonna grab a stack and clay, which I do have somewhere, probably here. Yep, let's grab a couple more blocks of this. And I have to remember how this works. I think you can overuse this, but it only takes like 10 gunpowder, I think, and sand as well. Oh, I'm gonna have to go check the quests again. So let me just make a bit more ceramic uh, and I will set up more, multiple of these machines, possibly even the reshapers and all that. Uh, and we're gonna see uh, how they look once they're done. All of the machines have been moved and equipped with dispersing extractors so we can uh, process all of the things that we need to process automatically basically and it's really cool uh, so we can grind up our flesh if we wanted to to make more bone meal because i've been doing that in between uh, episodes here just getting this and then tossing it into the grinder because that gets us five bone meal uh and, or six bone meal uh, and that is kind of nice so uh, that's pretty cool i've also updated the pack in between uh, episodes here and we are at the latest version which is i believe 1.0.11 so we got uh, an extra thing here from here we got a zen sapling from uh, our progeny tech reward here uh, so that is what this is basically and my sand seed just burst uh, and i've been i've been doing this for a bit to get a bit more sand so basically uh, let's try and harvest this and see what we get. I have no idea. We get Zen logs, which are somewhere in there. Okay, so the Zen leaves drop Zen and more Zen saplings. Okay, what is Zen used for? We can make a Zen crafting table. All right. Zen gem block, Zen stone, Zen saplings. We can smell it into Zen ingots, which then makes a Zen crafting tablet which can make zen bricks i assume this looks like it's mostly decorative yeah yeah i think it's mostly decorative uh so okay um, neat that's a cool thing that we can build with i guess uh, if we can automate uh, the harvesting of wood at some point i have uh i've not seen it uh or i've not seen a way to automate it but uh that's a really cool tree though so let's just grab this Okay, can we turn the Zen wood into bits of Zen? Rotary grinder makes sawdust. Oh, heat sawmill will make us Zen directly out of the logs. Okay, that's interesting. Cool. Uh, we can toss that in there. I also am starting to grow a bit more pixel because I wanted to uh, pick Celsius for the primordialis reactor because this, if it has nine items, it's or nine different items, I should say, it's the most efficient... Uh, in processing everything so uh, that's the grinder no 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 we want that's the incinerator the sawmill should be here yep you do your zen stuff the zen can go in here i also made a bunch more sticks uh so we can toss those in here and a bit more sawdust a bit more planks okay and i have a bunch of sand now which is really neat okay so we need to progress in chapter three and we need to get to a blood infusion core which requires us to get hardened blood shards, which requires hardened blood, which is blood in a drying basin. And the drying basin is just sticks. So we can try that. Let's get ourselves seven sticks. Like so. And can I, uh, papa, where do we want to put this? Right here seems like a perfect spot. Right there. Uh, can I just right click this? I can. Okay. So I assume that's just going to dry on its own. Uh, and get us the the dried blood that we need and then we can kill more spiders to fill up our blood extractor even more if we need to and we can also go into a sword uh, as well at some point when this once this searing swordfish breaks uh, also in the update uh, they added this which is a uh, okay that is weird so uh, it has basically all of the materials and different uh, different types of levels that you get for what hammer you need and all that so we can uh, we can actually see if we want to make a blade we can make a heavy blade a machete a simple blade or a short blade uh, and we can see what materials we can use and which type of hammer we need and the really cool part about this is if we want to go into tools and we go head and we go mallet head and we see that this uh, makes a hammer of tier 2 
This is gonna make a tier two and the nickel is gonna make a tier three with requiring tier two. So the nickel uh, ingot is made with, there's an alchemistry nickel, but we need this nickel, which is either nickel ore, which we can get with the orchid at some point, but it's basically a composition in a composer, which is oscillating gears, which we're getting from the quests. It's a composer cell, which is arcane gold, which is charcoal, mundabitur dust. Like it's things that we're not even close to yet. So we're gonna just stick with our tier two hammer, but at least the up upgradable option is there. So we got ourselves some hardened blood and we smelt that into hardened blood shards. So let's uh, put you into my furnace. Uh, go cobble go. That should get us our hardened blood shards. Okay. Uh, and uh, we were needing the infusion Wait, it's core, I think it is. This guy, blood infusion core. So that's that and a dark power gem. And a dark power gem is a dark gem thrown into 5,000 millibuckets of blood and it consumes fluid. So how do I, because I have 4,000. We need to spawn some spiders, but how does this work? So if I break this and we place some blood, it places a thousand millibuckets. So do I have to just, if I toss this in here, how do I place this into 5,000 millibuckets? Uh, it says throw in fluid. Is there like a cauldron I can use? Cauldron? That's a regular vanilla cauldron. Barrel? Redstone barrel from inspirations. Abstract barrel from unique crops. I don't know exactly how to throw this in here. So let me figure it out and uh, let's see if we can make ourselves a blood infusion core. I made it work. I got the dark power gem. Basically what you need to do is you need to place the liquid in this sort of general uh, formation. So you have uh, five sources in a plus and then you toss it in the middle source and it uh, makes it work. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna plant our dirt back here. Uh, where we can uh, grow some more trees or something if we wanted to. Uh, all right, so we have the dark power gem. We can now craft that with the hardened blood into a blood infusion core, and that will be give us a quest. Will be, uh, and I'm gonna take the oscillating gears, I guess, uh, and we can now get into a blood infuser, which is the blood infusion core runes, which are smelted rune stone or rune bags. So we need to get rune stone. So that is ancient gravel in liquid souls and ancient gravel is that soul dust in water makes liquid souls. That's fine. How do I make ancient gravel? Gravel. Oh, I assume you just place this, uh, you place gravel here and it turns into ancient gravel because it makes ancient cobblestone. All right, so I'm gonna have to set up an ancient gravel maker of this, okay. Uh, what else do we need? Carved dark stone bricks and dark stone bricks are onyx, which onyx is cobblestone and the shard of soil of fire. Okay, we can get that. Let's get a stack of cobblestone, shard of soil of fire. Let's make one of those. Okay, and it said we can turn this into dark stone by lighting it with a flint and steel or is it burning? I think it's this. Dark stone, what's that? Okay, uh, obsidian skull, it's really gonna use up my obsidian skull. I'm gonna have to make another one. Okay, fine. And the Aeternus crystal, which is inferno crystals, which is inferno fuel. Do we have any more inferno fuel? I have inferno crystals, uh, and we can turn those in the primordialis thingy-bob, or the reshaper, I think it was. So let's turn you on. Um, I think it was the reshaper. Yeah, yeah, with the primordium. Okay, uh, so that's gonna do that. Uh, we have the carved dark stone bricks, well, we have to make them. And then I hope, re I really hope it doesn't use my obsidian skull and I don't have to make another one. We'll see. Okay, so what is the thing that we needed to work for uh, was the runes, right? So that was the ancient gravel uh, because this is, how did I, what did I see? Oh, runestone, yeah, 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 that, that thing. We need ancient gravel. So I need some gravel to be placed on here. Uh, I have some gravel. 
Let's grab a stack. And let's just vein mine this. Okay, and then we can uh, put possibly some supporting blocks. I think it can stand on string. I think that'll work. So let's do... Oh God, you can't... Use... I placed string. Can I actually see it? Oh, I did place string. It's just right here. So that'll work. Okay, string is gonna be fine. All right, uh, did you do your thing? No, they're still heating up. Okay, let me place some gravel, wait for it to turn ancient. And also I'll make some soul dust so we can turn the liquids into the liquid soul thing and we should be able to craft the blood infuser. So I just realized I didn't even need to make the uh, soul dust because the soul dust turned into liquid souls. It's there's also a tube recipe to turn mysterious dust into liquid souls So what we can do is just place that there and then we can uh, toss our ancient gravel once it converts There we go ancient gravel makes rune stone. Lovely. I made some soul dust we're, we're gonna use it in the future probably so boom rune stone. I hope this will give us um, I should have probably, uh, can we use this? No. Okay. I probably could have, uh, placed these, uh, in the, oh, it's only smelting. Okay. So it isn't, there's no grindstone recipe. Okay. So blood infuser. So we need the Eternus crystals, which should be done here. Nice. Okay. We need that carved dark stone, so that's going to be like that to make dark stone bricks. And then again to make the carved dark stone bricks. I think that is it. Nice. Blood infuser. Amazing. Woohoo. So we can get blood potash, which is double your bone milling efficiency. Okay. And we get another choice reward. I'm going to take more gears. Uh, and then we need to make the promise of tenacity, which is a spider eye, an iron promise acceptor, which is block of iron with 10,000 blood from evil craft, okay. And then a bowl of promises strength, which is a filled bowl of empty promises, which is just a dark gems crushed with a bowl of empty promises, which is dark power gems. So we need a lot of dark gems. And the amount you get from the atomic reshaper and the amount of stuff that you need to make primordium is insane. Cause it makes like let's say 10 or so, or maybe 12 out of nine stacks of different types of items. So what it's telling me is that we need more farms, basically. So um, we can probably stack farms one on top of another because we can hold the water back with like open fence gates and then the water will just drop down into here, into the hopper in the middle. Actually, no, it won't, it'll drop on the tray. We could put farms on the side, kind of. I don't... Oh, this is going to be a lot of work to get this going. All right, let me have a think and see what we can do with the base to make the farming a bit better. I think I will rework the farms in between episodes if I have time. Uh, and if not, we're going to do it next episode because I want to do some other things today. I want to try this automatic crystal cutter and see if we can automate the production of energy and crystals and energy and dust eventually. But because this basically works like this, it needs, uh, it says it needed, uh, here it needs 100 degrees of minimum temperature. And I don't know if you can use two magmatic aero heaters that produce 80 degrees and you, cause there's, I believe there's called vents. Uh, no, it is a uh, hot air something. Uh, it isn't here. Da, da, da. Hot air, no. Let's just go into entry index. This guy, wormhole funnel. The funnel. Basically, this guy, uh, which we can't make yet because we can't have ender pulse, but eventually we'll be able to make it uh, once we have uh, ender pulse. We can do cactus and ink pearl fragments. Okay, apparently later. So, but these can uh, transmit hot air to another wormhole funnel, so we can link it with a wormhole linker. Yeah, that just basically transmits power from one source to another source, basically. So I don't think that's gonna work, but we can do 
this automatic crystal cutter, let's say we put this guy here. Let's say we take uh, and we just rotate this to the Mac. We're going to make another lever. So I need another stick. And we can do like this. And we can put a lever here just to turn it off. And we can give you some energy and dust. And let's turn it on. And this requires 100 degrees. So that's going to be up very quickly. And then if we take an energy and crystal, and I can't really place it here, but this will slowly burn and produce more hot air temperature. Or And we should see this guy cut up this guy once it grows a little bit. The only problem is, I mean, it says that you can, it says like each automatic crystal will be spend more time being active than active. It is possible to stack large amounts of them vertically with minimum hot air requirements with the minimum hot air requirements with minimal penalty. So I think it says it required 100 degrees uh, uh, cutter. It would be really cool if it required it just like 80 degrees heat transmit at 80%. Yeah, so it does 80% through to the next one. So if we, because I can't just plant this crystal on top of the next thing, but what we can do is we can probably make another one, rotate it 90 degrees and put that here uh, and then make another one for example so that would be here and then another one would be here with another crystal basically so we could do that and power it with one energy and arrow heater and we could get a nice cool looking tower with uh, all of these crystal cutters to automate these and essentially <clears throat> we would want extractors extracting out of here and putting it into a rotary grinder with uh just like a hot air uh with uh, this guy, one of the magmatic arrow heaters, because that's what is required to run the grinder. And then we can turn that into energy and dust, energy and dust, and put it back into the energy and arrow heater. And I don't know if this guy, because right now the temperature is dropping and the crystals have, haven't grow, hasn't grown. I don't know how many of these we would need for this to be actually worth it. Because uh, that's going to be a lot of ceramic and that's a lot of iron which I don't have. I have 150 iron and that's just, I feel like I wish, at least I would wish that there would be a way to automate the processing of ancient cobblestone, but I don't think this is really the way they want you to go. <clears throat> they want you to automate all of the farms so you can automate this primordialis reactor. And with that, you can automate the atomic reshaper because you need primordium to run stone through here. And then you run stone through here and you get all the different ores and you can process. I can process like this 28 iron into 56, I think it would be, yeah, uh, 56 iron. And that was from a stack of stone. And you could just constantly run, like, for example, this, uh, this guy's into a... Uh, a gravity block collecting cobblestone, automatically smelting it, putting it into the thing. And it just feels weird that you don't get any sort of piping other than ceramic or like this, uh, this pink composite brick stuff uh, from Content Tweaker. Like I don't get any sort of simple extraction pipe, which is just basically this. And it's kind of annoying in a way, but I think I'm gonna end the episode off here. I'm going to cool off over the weekend uh, and uh, maybe get a little bit of uh, a plan for next weekend or next week, basically, for, for this pack uh, and see what we can get in ourselves into. And those glasses are really weird to look at. Uh, so with that, I want to really thank you all for so much for watching. I'm really hoping you enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. Consider subscribing to see new videos. You can support me on Patreon if you want. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a great one. Bye-bye.